Hey guys, it's Jamie from Legion Gaming. In this video, I have part one of a three-part series of videos I did with Iceman Oz and Cheesy Gaming. They're both YouTubers that post Battlefield videos. Don't go and check out their channels down below in the description for more information on this kind of stuff and just general Battlefield videos. But in this video, part one, we're going to be just sort of a discussion about Battlefield 2016. I'll part two and three come out over the next few days. Don't forget to stay tuned for those and subscribe if you are new here, but let's get right into part number one. What's up everyone? It's Iceman Oz, aka J, and today we've got Cheesy Gaming and Laser Gaming alongside me, and we're going to discuss the next Battlefield game. So first off, we are, what are we going to discuss first, guys? What are we thinking here? A lot of different topics we're going to go over. The thing that I think is most interesting is when it comes to the core gameplay, what are we going to see when it comes to it? I guess a lot of it depends on the t like the time frame, right? Because that's really what it will be based around. Yeah, so we obviously have like the three different types of timelines. So past, present, or future. Obviously, with past, um, most people thought it was primarily going to be World War One, but I guess now with some leaks, it might be World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, maybe. Um, with present, it would probably be a bit postmodern with just continuing the Battlefield 3 and 4 franchise and obviously the future we have like the 2143 series so like they each offer like sort of different gameplay I think that if they went into the future it'd be even more fast paced than it is now although they wouldn't have to do it that way just generally from how future games have gone in the past um, they tend to be a bit more fast paced so yeah that's that's pretty much what those timelines offer as far as gameplay. Like past tends to be a bit slower paced and clunky. Like if you look at Bad Company 2, that time era, it was a bit more clunky. I mean, that's just sort of the gameplay style that well, the game had. Well, that really comes down to the gameplay, not necessarily yeah, the time frame. The time, I mean, yeah, there's clunky, yeah. clunky gameplay in 2142, right? Yeah. So that really doesn't uh, play a point into it. I think the way I see it generally is what is the most popular now? Jack Frags. Um, a YouTuber that everyone should know if you're in the Battlefield community yeah, did yeah. a poll and World War Two was the 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 main uh, the vote like there was a voting poll World War Two was the way to go for people so EA would be and DICE would be silly not to now the way you got to think about it though is EA is not in direct control of how the game is made DICE is in control of how the game is made EA yeah. does have some influence but um, that they aren't the be all and end all dice are so they will have a vision for their game we still don't know at the time of recording this what that vision will be but we know that it's gonna have to whatever it's going to be it has to release well because with battlefield 4 and battlefield 3 i i don't know if you guys agree but they release generally pretty yeah. bad in very in I a think, very bad state although i think ea i mean i don't know necessarily if this is ea or visceral's part but they seem to do a bit of a better job with hardline i mean while the game might not necessarily be as popular the launch itself was fairly smooth and there weren't too many bugs i mean balance wasn't necessarily great but the game did launch well and i think if they were to go past though i mean the active battlefield community may want past but as far as bringing in new players which is obviously something that ea is constantly looking at i'm not necessarily sure how well world war ii would do because i mean ea while like they might not necessarily want to admit it and a lot of battlefield players like don't necessarily want to admit it like ea wants to target like the call of duty franchises they're the biggest franchise and their biggest competitor and they want to bring in some battlefield i mean some call of duty players into the battlefield franchise that's and an i don't know if world war ii would do that right that's an excellent point but you've got to think about why they're doing that right why are call of duty themselves we've got to go to the call here why are call of duty uh trying to target a that demographic we got in the demographic are children like let's get that straight yeah. the way the games yeah. are designed are for children there are kids literally like you know dripping from uh, dripping from the mouth drooling over you know these skins yeah. that mean absolutely nothing and we've got to ask why is that well when you think about it when it comes to video games who has the most free time in the world children sure, so yeah. of course the way the games are designed now are going to lean towards that and that sucks for grown adults and and, yeah. and teenagers and older people 
And, and that's why I think as a general scale, I think that's why a lot of us are really hating like a lot of the first person shooters that are coming out, not necessarily yeah. hating, but maybe not feeling the same way that we used to before because the games before were designed for adults and now they're designed for children. So yeah, which I mean, yeah, continue. Yeah, so um, basically like there are a lot of like hyper realistic shooters like I guess Squad or Insurgency, which is uh, one I played. and. Uh, and also like Verdun, I think it's a World War One shooter, and it's pro really realistic. And the really realistic games are not that fun. And more arcade games like COD probably do better because the market is children. In the end, EA and Dice care about money. So yeah. Yeah, I mean that is what EA cares about. And if you look at like something like Battalion, I think they're trying to sort of go away from that. Like they're trying to go back to the games that are designed like for adults because they know that like. Mm -hmm. Battlefield and COD, like, realistically, they're not going to go back to those kind of games, just sales numbers-wise. I don't necessarily think they can afford to go back to those kind of games where they're designed more for adults. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you got to remember as well that the developers of Call of Duty are making so much money off, you know, those little, what what is it that they even sell, like, keys, like, crypto keys and oh stuff? Oh my, and... it's, it, it's actually absolutely ridiculous, like. Their DLC is just going to absolute crap, all for money. It's yeah, kind of literally, ridiculous. and and premium as well, right? I mean, that that like yeah. a lot of it, it's just all cash. It's all just about the cash money, and I feel like what's happening now is we're actually taking away from our games. Let's take for example Counter Strike Global Offensive. I said this yeah. on a video that will be releasing very soon. Um, that. Uh, they have a workshop and they have developers uh, that are, you know, a part of the community and there's a real community involvement. Now, you could say the community test environment is, is really a part of that, but that's not really enough. I feel like with things like premium, it takes away from things like CSGO where a lot of fans are just putting in all sorts of stuff into the game and it adds longevity to these games. Now it just seems to be more of a cash grab. Yeah, like, I personally was, like, I'm sort of, like, working on, like, a World War II server for Hardline where, like, you can just use, like, the classic weapons and it's only on certain maps. But, like, when you try to go in and customize it, I mean, they do really limit you and it's kind of annoying because if you look at other games that have, like, modding capabilities and stuff like that, I don't, I really, it's just annoying that they don't give you those capabilities in Battlefield because, like you said, it does really create a better community that because people can constantly like work on the game and have more fun with it and i mean like the developers don't even have to work on necessarily new content because the community can make a lot of new content but uh the thing going back to the cod thing like they release like a couple dlc weapons and the only way you can get them is through like the cases and you can earn them in game but it takes like three to four games to earn one case and the weapons only drop like once every 50 or 100 cases and like if they want to bring new people back into the game that's just not going to happen because like people have to play countless games in order to get them so what people end up doing is just buying these cases spending like 100 to 200 dollars on them just to get the new weapons that's like for every dlc it's kind of ridiculous and i just really hope that battlefield doesn't go that way in the future like they brought battle packs in and they allow you to buy the battle packs which I just think isn't very good, and I just hope they don't bring like weapons into battle packs in the future. Right, yeah, that would be awful when it comes to gameplay balance, but it wouldn't shock me. Yeah. I do hope you guys enjoyed part one of this series. Don't forget to subscribe down below with part two and three coming later, which will talk more about uh, vehicular versus infantry, weapon balance, game modes, release date, and everything like that. So don't forget to stay tuned for those videos. Subscribe if you are new here. That's what we do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.